I saw my uh, family while I was home for the holidays, and they're uh, crazy. They're definitely crazy people. I, uh, it, was this, it was a weird situation, like a couple things happened. I found out that my grandpa thinks I am a complete dipshit. And how could he not, you know? Like, look at me. <laughs> how, could, how could he not? When this man was 20 years old, my grandpa was 20, he owned a home, he had a wife, and he had fought in a war by the age of 20. That's crazy. I'm 25. The other day, I hit a bong so hard my ears popped. <laughs> We're just living in a different time. <laughs> Things have changed. He, uh, he owned a home. I own three bongs. That's, that's dumb. Uh, because every bong that's ever been made does the exact same thing. <laughs> it's an expensive single function object that I bought three times. <laughs> Smoking weed's pretty chill, all right, gang? <laughs> uh, my grandma, I also had this, I had a little situation with my grandma while I was home. Uh, she got really upset because I told her that I'm gay. Thank you for your support, everyone. <laughs> it's fine, I'm not, I'm not gay. Uh, my grandma was like being really passive aggressive about how I didn't bring a date to Christmas. And I was like, I gotta fuck with this lady somehow. It's <laughs> like, well, grandma, I didn't bring a date to Christmas because I have sex with men. <laughs> I thought it was like lighthearted, that's funny, right? <laughs> she, she did not think it was funny at all. She got really upset. My uncle was like, what's more bigoted, you know, someone who uses gay people as a punchline or someone who's never been around gay people? I was like, well, it doesn't matter because I'm not gay. <laughs> Which coincidentally is what I tell my boss when he asks why I'm late for work. <laughs> doesn't matter, I'm not gay, okay? <laughs> it's fine. Uh, she got upset though, it's, it's like, a, that's an old person thing to care about, you know? It's, uh, I'm a young guy, I don't care. I don't care if you're a man with a man or a woman with a woman. Like, if you don't subscribe to a binary gender system, like, if you're in a healthy, fulfilling relationship with another human being, that's it, you know? That's all it takes for me to hate you. That's more, that's, that's more than enough. I'm alone. I don't know why I read the Bible into it. I think we should make it illegal for people who are happier than me to get married. That's what I think. That's my stance. Oh, my grandparents. They, they, trying to live, you know, times are changing. We're just in different times, you know. There's, there's, there's always a new fad diet and stuff. There's always, my friend's trying to get me to be vegan. Anybody, any vegans in the house tonight? Cool, cool. I, uh, my friend's trying to be, <laughs> I'll write that down, I'll tell him later. He's trying to get me to be vegan. He explained it to me. It's uh, no animal products of any kind. He's like, it's expensive though, because nowadays they have the technology to make cheese out of like soybeans or something, I don't know. But he, it's like, it's expensive, no animal products. And I thought about it, I was like, dude, no it's not. I, uh, I was vegan all last week unintentionally, I'm just broke. <laughs> I don't necessarily like love animals, I just didn't finish college and cheese is expensive. <laughs> I didn't even realize until it was over. People act like this is difficult, I'm vegan all the time. <laughs> I couldn't afford to eat anything but rice and beans for a whole week, and apparently that makes me better than all of you. <laughs> That's part of it, actually. <laughs> yeah, I had rice and beans all last week. Uh, pretty sure that's vegan. If it's not, I know my other favorite snack is vegan. Everybody say it with me. Favorite vegan snack? Pills. <laughs> no animal suffering. <laughs> Unless you count how they test them, I don't know, but I'm not eating them, that's the main point. Zero animal products. My favorite, uh, favorite pill to snack on lately is Adderall. You guys know about this? You know I mean? It's like methamphetamine, but made by a chemist in a lab and not a tweaker in a bathtub. It's like the only thing It's crazy, we give it to kids, which is crazy. It's an upper, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, it's a fucking hop, skip, and a jump, man. Take one, sometimes. <laughs> it's an upper. For anyone who doesn't know what an upper is, just imagine a pill that you could take that makes you feel like you're running late for something. <laughs> and that's like sort of it, but it also rules. I don't know how to explain it. You take it and you're like, God, somebody give me a jump rope and a typewriter. I'm about to change the culture. I don't know. I'm freaking out right now. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're fun. You can, uh, you can crush them up and snort them. 
don't judge me for saying that. It's just what my pharmacist told me. Uh, <laughs> you, can, you can crush them up. And so pharmacist, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, pharmacist is actually, uh, it's a Latin term, meaning guy that lives upstairs. <laughs> that's, that's where I get my pills from my pharmacist. Uh, but you, you can crush them up and snort them, and the drip is sweet, uh, like candy. It's like, it's like sweet tarts that make you focus. <laughs> The drip is sweet, and I have to assume that's because they're for kids. I don't know why else they would do that. Oh, man. Hey, do you guys think the guy that coined the term one-hit wonder ever came up with any other popular phrases? <laughs> I think it's just that one, maybe. I don't know. Oh, man. I'm happy to be here. It's cool. It was a rough trip getting up here. I, uh recently been carrying around all my possessions in a tied up handkerchief on a stick, you know, like over my shoulder. Uh, it's a really convenient way to move stuff, no hobo, but it's, a, it's just convenient to move things that way. No hobo. <laughs> Man, I've been all over lately. Whenever I, when I went home, uh, I saw some, uh, some of my old friends at this wedding and I heard a story about a mutual old friend and it was, it was bad. Uh, a friend of mine, I found out recently, he, uh, he killed someone. Someone I went to kindergarten with. He, he didn't murder someone, he manslaughtered. Right? You guys have heard of this, right? Manslaughter? They told me, it's like, oh, manslaughter. I thought mansplaining was bad, but goddamn, <laughs> it just gets worse. But, yeah. Manslaughtered a woman. I don't know if that matters. But he had a, a lady with a truck real good, and he's not handling it well, you know, like one might not. Uh, I was talking to his brother on the phone about it after it happened, and he was like, you know, Coleman, uh, he's pretty fucked up about that whole hitting that lady with a trunk thing. He's not handling it well. Uh, he's got a long road ahead of him. What can we do to support him? I said, uh, well, for starters, we should probably pump the brakes on the driving metaphors. Man. That's a, a long road ahead of him. That's a terrible way to put it. <laughs> it's really bad. Uh, but he's right, you know. I mean, he is right, and he's got a long road ahead of him. It's gonna be a lot of obstacles. He's just gonna have to plow through them. <laughs> that's, how, that's how life works. Right? You gotta keep on trucking. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for being here. It's very nice to be in front of people that actually want to see comedy. You know, sometimes you do shows and people don't even like know there's going to be one, so that's nice. Uh, <laughs> they're just like in a bar, <laughs> and then some sad bar back drags out a microphone stand, and I ruin first dates. Uh, that's, uh, that's most of my twenties, actually. That's what that's been. I did a show uh, a few months ago where half the crowd was Amish. <laughs> Uh, so this is better. You know, <laughs> it's much better. Um, I didn't know how I was going to go. I was very nervous. Um, it actually went really well. I think it's because I told them I was very famous, and I knew they couldn't look it up. So that's not... <laughs> um, I'm not in the library. You know, they can't, they can't find me. Anybody, uh, we drinking tonight? Anybody? Yeah. Can drink? Anybody hung over? I'm moving a little slow. I had a rough weekend. You know? Have you ever been so hungover where you feel like people should be thanking you for your service? Uh, like, hey, you, you made it out of your house. Good. That, that's very brave of you. Um, put a sign up on the highway. Uh, you, you did it. I don't know. I like that this is one of the few jobs where I can tell the people potentially paying me that I'm hungover. That's nice. Into a microphone, nonetheless. That's wild. Like, you couldn't do that at like, a grocery store. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we're going to need a cleanup on aisle three. Um, it's vomit. And I did it, so <laughs> take care of that. I, uh, I, uh, I went home for the holidays. I'm from a very small town in central Illinois. I went home. I've got a very, uh, a very small, very old family. Like, I'm an only child. My, uh, my dad's 70. My grandma is about to turn 95. You know, so, uh, so I was buying gifts that I'm going to get back <laughs> pretty soon. You know, that's... <laughs> it's a tough way to shop. <laughs> like, I hope my grandma likes the Entourage box set, because uh, that's, that's what she got. I'll show it a few times, too. 
your host said, uh, talk about Chicago being dangerous. You know, people are worried about me from my town uh, living in Chicago. Because I don't know if you've seen the news, but they're not very nice to Chicago. <laughs> Every newscaster, they're just like, breaking story. Everyone's dead in Chicago. <laughs> don't, don't go. <laughs> when I go home, people are like, are you nervous about living in Chicago? You know, you know all the danger? I'm like, I don't know, you know. I live in, uh, in Wrigleyville. That's what that one's called. Yeah, a few people are familiar. Yeah. If you're not familiar, it's a whole ville based around the Chicago Cubs. Yeah. That's what that is, yeah. yeah. They're like, yeah, but is there violence? I'm like, totally, but it's mostly domestic. So, um, it's bad, but I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of angry Cubs fans running around. <laughs> no. When I go home, people look at me a lot differently. And not a lot of people move to big cities where I'm from. So they're always, you know, kind of judging. They're always like, oh, there's Eric. He's back from the city. <laughs> oh, you think you're better than me, city boy? And I'm just like, Dad, get out of my room, okay? You know, this, is, this is why I don't come home, you know? Uh, last time I went home, I, uh, I get to see my grandparents. My grandparents just celebrated uh, 50 years, which is really cool, 50 year anniversary. Yeah, thank you, they're not here, but I'll tell them. Um, <laughs> let them know. Um, and at their 50th wedding anniversary, uh, my grandpa, he's one of the funniest guys I know. He always goes for the joke. And uh, we're surrounded by friends and family. He stands up, looks at my grandma and says, being married to you for 50 years has felt like 10 minutes. Then he took a drink and goes, underwater. <laughs> it was the best timing I've ever seen in my whole life. <laughs> Luckily, my grandma had turned off her hearing aids about two years ago, so we were fine there. She didn't, she didn't pick it up. I was back in my, uh, my hometown talking to, a, to an old family friend, and she said, uh, you know, I feel so bad for people in your generation because you all go to college, you're all drowning in debt, and you're all receptionists. Yeah. I was like, you know someone who's a receptionist? <laughs> How in the hell did they get that job? <laughs> I'm interning at a dog walking company right now, and if this golden retriever doesn't write me a letter of recommendation, I may never be an Uber driver. So, it's, it's tough out there. You know? I like living in Chicago. It's, uh, it's great. One of my favorite things about it is Whole Foods. Do you all have Whole Foods around here? Yeah, yeah, they didn't have them where, where I was either. Uh, I had to like, go to the city to find one. I like the vibe there, it's very classy. There's women drinking wine while pushing a shopping cart. Like, that's, that's something else. But I don't shop there. It's extremely expensive. <laughs> but I try to recreate that vibe for my life. You know? um, apparently, drinking a 40 at an Aldi isn't classy. <laughs> yeah, that's a misdemeanor, is what they told me. Uh, I live right next to like a uh, like a middle school or like an elementary school, and uh, a few months ago when it was nice out, uh, I, I, all the kids were playing outside, I was walking by and I heard these kids having that classic kid argument. You know, the, uh, I bet my dad can beat up your dad. Do you remember that? I kind of got nostalgic. Yes. And then this kid goes, oh yeah? I've got two dads. And I was like, hell yeah, Chicago. This is, <laughs> this is different than where I grew up. That's wild. <laughs> Childhood is different now. <laughs> And then that kid looks at another kid and goes, Hey, Weston, I bet my two dads can beat up your two dads. <laughs> and then that kid looked down and he goes, Actually, um, my dad's got divorced. And the other kid goes, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Do you need anything? He's like, deep down, he's a good kid. <laughs> and, uh, he goes, No, it's fine. Uh, they got remarried. I have four dads now. Everybody went nuts. I was, like, I was like, man, kids really are the future. They are. <laughs> they figure it out. I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, when I was back home, I was talking to a, uh, I was talking to a woman, and um, politics came up. That's tough to come up with. Like, and uh, uh, transgender people came up. That one's a hard topic to talk about. She was all worked up, just out of nowhere. She goes, you mean if a man puts on a dress, I just have to call him a woman? That doesn't make any sense. And I was like, well, you just put mayonnaise on potatoes and called it a salad, so <laughs> do labels really matter that much to you? you know? 
Yeah, she hated that one. Uh, mainly because it made a lot of sense. And uh, then I kept calling it uh, Tranes after that. She, <laughs> she hated that one even more. Surprise <laughs> I was talking to my parents the other day, and I was talking to them at, uh, at different times, but about the same thing. They had just both went to visit one of our family friends uh, in college. She's like a sophomore. And I was talking to my mom, and she goes, we just went and saw Lizzie. She's got a boyfriend now. And I go, oh, that's cool. And she goes, he has dreadlocks. And I go, is he nice? And she goes, yeah. And I go, great. And I was talking to my dad, and he goes, we just went and saw Lizzie. She's got a boyfriend. I said, I heard. And he goes, uh, black fella. <laughs> and I go, oh. Uh, thank God, you know, <laughs> uh, I assumed white kid with dreads and I was like, we got to pull her out of college, I think. Uh, that's, that's not how those work. Like, liberal arts is not working out for her. Um, appreciate mostly white people being cool with me talking about race. You know, that's, uh, I'm really brave to do it, to do it here. Um, really breaking ground. It's just fun jokes, you know. Some people get real mad. Here's the thing, I, racism's like big in the news right now. I don't understand it. It doesn't really make sense, you know. But I do understand hating someone immediately. I just didn't get the skin color part. That doesn't bother me. Like I was at a bar the other night, and this guy was like, yeah, we're gonna need two beers. And I was like, that guy shouldn't vote. Um, let's, let's, keep, let's build a wall around him, maybe. I hate him. Uh, <laughs> Especially in times like these, I look for connection, especially when it happens like organically. Like I was in an elevator the other night and uh, there's a black guy in the elevator and there's a Cher song playing. And he goes, you know, man, if I was in Vegas, I'd go see her. And I was like, great, we're all the same. You know, that's good to hear. Um, like we may have differences in opinion, but we all believe in life after love. And I think that's <laughs> what the news should be talking about a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Anyone here uh, in a relationship, dating, married? Cool, yeah, right on. I, uh, I just got out of a relationship a few months ago, and uh, being single is weird. I'm like noticing things that I used I didn't used to notice, like things that were just in the background. Like I have a car, and sometimes I'll drive without my seatbelt on. You know how it like dings to remind you? Like I used to think that was really annoying, and now I'm like, wow, it's nice to have something that cares about you. Ah, man, that is. <laughs> when you put it on, you're like, oh, it's like a hug. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I was thinking about it. it takes a long time in a relationship to figure out what someone likes. It takes longer to figure out what they dislike, and I think that's more important, you know, avoid a lot of arguments. Like, I used to date this girl who'd get really mad at me if I put periods in text messages. That was like a real fight we had. She would read that as an abrupt stop, like I was mad at her. Yeah. I was like, man, you must really hate books, you know? <laughs> that's, those things are full of them. <laughs> I hate them. I, uh, this is generalizing, totally generalizing, but it's just personal experience. I think women, when they look for a guy, they, they like a little project, you know? Like a nice fixer-upper in a guy. And I say that because I feel like I've been a few women's projects. Um, but it's one of those projects that you get two-thirds of the way through and it just kind of sits in your living room for a few years. <laughs> and then you move and you're like, ah, oh, the next tenant will take care of it, you know? And I'm like, hi, I think we lost the instructions. Um, can, you, can you help me here? I don't know what's going on. I, uh, now that I'm back out dating and stuff, it's weird because you, if you're in a relationship for so long, you, you get to know that person, you get your moves, you know, and then you, they're gone and you don't, your moves don't work everywhere. I don't know. Because guys, we just don't have moves. <laughs> Someone has to be like, oh, that's your move. And you're like, right on, I got a move. I'm like, that's, that's how it happened. Then you take it somewhere else and you're like, that's not a good move. <laughs> so, like, it was, uh, especially if you're like like one night stands, you know, that's crazy. I have to be like, all right, Eric, you can't choke strangers, you know, like that's, <laughs> they don't know that you won't kill them. Like that's, that hasn't been established yet. <laughs> During sex is the only time you can choke someone you barely know and not go to jail. Did you know that? Um, that's one of the few times. It's that and high school wrestling. And uh, both are pretty arousing, if I'm being honest. <laughs> I was with a girl recently, and she goes, is choking like your thing? And I was like, no, I just miss my ex, you know? Uh, that's, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I have a job when I'm not doing this. Um, I'm an indoor skydiving instructor. That's what I do for 
Good job. If you're not familiar, it's a vertical wind tunnel that produces enough wind that simulates the free fall of a skydive. You actually fly around. You know, people love it. Um, it was just voted in the Chicago Tribune as the number one place to bring your stepkids. So. <laughs> Like, it's so fun there, you can gain approval. Like, that's the best part. Like, I've been petitioning to change our slogan to come as Jeff, leave as dad. So, all right, everybody, have a good one. Thank you.
feel sorry for you. You're making millions. <laughs> I was in Lowell on a Saturday night performing comedy. Feel sorry for me, all right? Feel sorry for me. I got a seven-year-old daughter. She's fantastic. Um, I don't bring her to comedy shows, but you know, she's cool. I got a problem with her, though, sometimes, man. Uh, my problem with her is she's too goddamn smart. She talks to me like she's an adult all the time, and it pisses me right off. It's because I talked to her like she was an adult from birth. Me and her mother decided we're going to talk to her like she's an adult. That way she develops a, a large diction and a great vocabulary, and she'll be able to speak well, and she'll be so well-rounded, and she won't baby talk, and blah, 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 blah. And nobody tells you the side effect of that is you get a smart-ass kid. That's what happens. That's a side effect. I was driving around up north around Christmas time. That's where she lives, up north, Petoskey, Michigan. I'd like to just gauge like how white the room is by the response to me saying Petoskey, Michigan. There's a high level, it's pretty white. <laughs> Driving around late at night, a deer runs in front of the car. My first thought is, fuck, there's gonna be another deer. Because that's what happens with deer, man. They're stupid. They see one, they're like, oh, do that. Deer runs in front of the car, second deer comes, blasting it. Because you don't stop when there's a deer in the road. Giving you all some public service announcement right now. Do not stop. It'll fuck up your car. You'll like skid out and shit. The deer will, it's bad. Just plow through it. it sounds horrible, but it's better for the car. Because I don't give a fuck about that deer, man. I gotta pay for this car, not the deer. A cop will come along and shoot that deer. I gotta replace my hood if this shit gets fucked up. Blast this deer. Boom! Deer flies over the hood of the car. I slam on the brakes. My daughter's in the back seat. She's like, oh, Daddy! Did you just hit a deer? And I was like, oh, daughter, that was a stupid fucking question. <laughs> I just blasted this deer. You saw it happen. Why are we having this conversation right now? So I got out of the car, I went to look, I looked at the hood. No damage in the car. Deer was dead as fuck. Like deer. deer was very much dead. I get back in the car, I close the door, we sit and we start driving for like another two minutes, total silence. And then my daughter just says, Dad, that was really sad. I'm like, yeah, it was very sad. She's seven, you know, she's so it's a kind of a heavy moment for her. I'm like, you're right, it was sad. She's like, like it's really sad because now you're a murderer. I'm like, what? <laughs> no, I'm not a murderer. I hit a deer, I'm not a murderer. Right, you hit a deer, it died, you're a murderer. I'm like, no, I'm not a murderer. Yeah, Dad, you're a murderer. I'm like, no, it was vehicular manslaughter if we're being specific, all right? <laughs> You can call me a vehicular manslaughterer. Don't call me a murderer. She got mad. I got really agitated. I was like, I yelled at her. I was like, vehicular manslaughter. <laughs> and she shut up. We drove for like five minutes of silence, and then she broke it. This is the thing about kids. Anybody who has kids knows this is a true fact. Kids will make you really fucking pissed off, and then instantly remind you of why you love them to death. Instantly. Five minutes total silence. I'm fucking seething. I'm like, oh, I did call me. <laughs> and she breaks the silence by just saying, Daddy, I hope you never die. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh my God, you are so adorable. <laughs> I'm a dad, I want to hold on to these dad moments. And I was like, oh my God, I got to keep this moment going. I was like, honey, why do you hope I never die? And she looks at me with those beautiful eyes, those cute little eyes. And she's just like, because I don't want you to go to heaven and kill that deer again. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>